Hello, my name is Zach Wyman, and today I will be showing you my presentation on cell phone forensics. Cell phone forensics is a growing field that still has a lot of questions that still need to be answered, as well as solutions that need improvement. Throughout my presentation, I will be talking about the geometry and anatomy of a cell phone, what cell phone forensics is, along with a few statistics, the types of evidence that are available on cell phones and how they are important to the field, the types of evidence that can be obtained from cell phone service providers, different ways that criminals hide evidence, SIM cards and their importance to the field, the impact text messaging has on cell phone forensics, and different types of software and kits that are popular to cell phone forensics. I will first start out by describing to you the geometry of cell phones. A cell phone is made up of many parts, some of which we don't even recognize are there. I have listed most of the parts here. Some optional accessories that some people choose for their phones are memory cards and GPS chips, which can be extremely important to an investigator. Important information can be extracted from memory cards that a criminal or cheating spouse can try hiding personal information on. A GPS chip can also be very important in an investigation because they hold logs of where and when a cell phone has been. What is cell phone forensics? Cell phone forensics is the science of retrieving data from a mobile phone under forensically sound conditions. This new field of forensics is growing more and more each year as new software and technologies are being invented. Cell phones have been very important in many cases, such as cheating spouse cases and drug deals. Cell phones reveal a lot about our daily communications, such as the who, what, and whens of each and every call or text. This is what makes cell phones very important in forensic investigations. The main difference between cell phone forensics and computer forensics is that cell phone forensics can get very complicated, especially since there are no standards in hardware and software. It is nearly impossible to make a universal standard tool to pull essential data from cell phones. The bar graph you are looking at shows the growth in millions of the usage of cell phones over the past 18 years in the United States. This growth in cell phone usage helps in the growth of cell phone forensics because the chances of people having cell phones will be greater in the future, thus providing more evidence for investigations. A statistic from 2008 says that 16% of U.S. homes primarily use cell phones for calls and 13% use landlines primarily for calls. There are many types of evidence that can be extracted from cell phones, some that a normal person would not usually think of. Some of the obvious types of evidence include text messages, call history, the contacts list, and emails. A few of the overlooked types of evidence include calendar entries, websites viewed, phone company records, and GPS. Phones with GPS chips are very important because once the phone is turned on, the exact geological location is stored in the chip. As I mentioned before, there are many complications with cell phones. Unlike desktop and laptop computers, a cell phone is a very small computer. The size of cell phones and their components can sometimes be a problem for the investigator. The huge variety of cables and connectors for hundreds of types of cell phones can be a problem for the investigator since they would need every type of cable in order to investigate all different types of phones. Each phone or phone company also has its different operating system. There are hundreds of different operating systems for cell phones, unlike computers where there are only a few ma different main operating systems. Prepaid phones can be an even bigger hassle for cell phone forensic investigators. With prepaid phones, there are no contracts, therefore making it nearly impossible to track back a specific user to the phone being investigated. Criminals think of prepaid phones as disposable phones because they don't leave a trail. Like computer forensic investigations, data and information can be retrieved from the service providers of different cell phone companies. Important information pertaining to the case can be provided to the investigator, such as call history, GPS locations, and specific logs from cell phone towers. Like computer networks, cell phone towers work together and communicate with each other during each call or text. When you are moving in a car or otherwise, your call is transmitted from each cell phone tower when you move out of each tower's range, and a log of this is logged at your cell phone service provider. Most criminals are very smart when it comes to hiding their tracks. A few of the ways to destroy mobile cellular device evidence is by burning the phone, destroying the phone with water, or physically destroying the phone. Each of these tactics make it 100% impossible to get evidentiary information from the cellular device itself. 
although evidence can still be received from logs at the service provider. The SIM card is one of the most important parts of a cell phone for obtaining important information from the physical phone itself. SIM stands for Subscriber Identity Module. The name itself explains what it does. It is considered the brain of the phone's memory. The SIM is the user's identity card that holds all of the cell phone user's information. The SIM accommodates all phone book entries, recently deleted numbers, text messages, and cellular carrier information. Each phone's SIM card is protected by a four-digit code. A problem with the SIM card is that each SIM card can be transferred between phones. There are many tools that can be used to decode SIM cards without using a cell phone. One tool that I pointed out here is the Cell Phone Spy, which is like a USB stick that plugs into your computer. Here is a link that shows a short clip from CNN. This little device right here, it's out by Brickhouse Security. It's called the Ultimate SIM Card Management Solution. But all the information that we received, the information that the company sent over, uh, they were calling it the uh, cell phone spy. They're, they're obviously marketing this to uh, spouses worried about cheating, employers who want to keep dibs on their employees, also parents who want to know where their kids might be. They're also marketing it as a, as a tool to back up information on your cell phone. Uh, now you can get the, the device online for about 150 bucks, but this is what it looks like. One fact that I thought was interesting about this tool is that deleted text messages can be easily re retrieved making it easier to get deleted information. Text messaging has become extremely popular over the past few years. Cell phone forensic investigators are very happy about this because text messages are very easy to obtain. A statistic on texting is that in the year 2009, 130 million texts were sent. Texts on a phone are stored in binary, just like that of texts on a computer. When a user deletes a text message, the only thing changed is the status. Just like unallocated space on a computer, if the text message hasn't been overwritten, any message can be recovered using software. Sexting has become a very popular thing to do between teens. It has been so popular, one in five teens have said they've sexted even though the majority know it could be a crime. There was a case in Orlando, Florida, where a boy who just turned 18 sent a naked picture of his ex-girlfriend, who was 16, to her friends and family after an argument. The boy was arrested and charged with possession and distribution of child pornography. Just because he sent the picture, he was sentenced to five years of probation and was required by Florida law to register as a sex offender. This being said, something as simple as a text message or picture message can lead to life punishment. There are many different types of software that are used in the field of cell phone forensics. Some of them are small and compact, such as Darkpilot, XRY, and Celebrate, which make it easy to carry and use on the scene. After researching the different software, Celebrate was the one that seemed to be able to decipher the most amount of phones, including the iPhone, which none of the other softwares have the ability to do. Cell phone forensics has grown and continues to grow each and every day. As technology grows, there will be more research that will help the software and tools become more advanced. We learned that in 2008, there were 83 million cell phone users. Looking at this number makes me believe that within the next 10 to 20 years, about 99% of people will have a cell phone, therefore making cell phone forensics a much more important field. As a society, we have noticed that texting has become very popular and can also lead to big issues. An example of this being cheating spouses or even child pornography. Well, I hope this slideshow presentation has informed you on the growing field of cell phone forensics. Once again, my name is Zach Wyman. For more information, you can visit my website at www.cs.uri.edu backslash tilde f09 underscore hpr underscore 14 backslash C E L L P H O N E Z A C H W Y M A N dot H T M.